And you all are the glory of the Father, and I bless each and every one of you. I honor the Father for you all. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. <laughs> I'm just so grateful to be here uh, in your presence once again. Thank you so much for those that are listening, and thank you just for your encouragement and your prayers too. To God be the glory. Amen and amen <laughs> i love you all right today i just wanted to uh, be, uh just speak on uh this topic uh sexual immorality and um you know the bible declares that whatever my father has not planted i will uproot yes he's uprooting it and um you know like i shared uh with us uh, a while back helping us to understand that um a lot of the time, you know, either in religion or people around us or people, you know, who were probably in relationship with, they can tend to blame you for things rather than to pray with you concerning it. We thank God because not everyone is the same. Some people, they actually, you know, they pray for you and they're there standing in gap for you and trust in the Lord that he will bring about his deliverance over your life. Some of you, you have been set free and some of you, you are going through this and yet you can't talk to anybody about it. Yes, because sometimes you can be the best that everybody sees all around. You know, you're there, you have good relationships, you know, you're doing so much amazing things. You can even be in ministry, <laughs> be teaching the word of the Lord and you're preaching, you're, you know, everybody loves you, everybody loves what you're doing, but that secret sin, <laughs> sexually morality is what people don't see because just right after you've basically been with friends and been with all of these people you go back and do what you sometimes you hate yourself can you see so for some people you know i i just want to speak to those who are actually struggling with this because i'm uh, you know there are people that the lord has you know delivered from it and i give god the glory for your deliverance and i know your testimony is going to bring about what deliverance to so many because there are so many people that are struggling with this in itself but not many people are willing to talk about it why because of the shame that is attached to it because of the embarrassment how people will look at them you know and things like that hence the reason why most times people don't talk about it no not at all they don't talk about it they hide it and they pray that the lord will basically grant them mercy to bring about this in itself to an end but the lord is showing mercy to a lot of people in this hour and the reason why i shared that with us is because you know for many of you you have positioned yourself and you know, I believe I was sharing a prophetic word about the anointing destroying the yoke. And I was there helping us to understand that in this hour, it's a place where, you know, for whatever reason, the Lord is basically, you know, honoring the calendar of the Jews. Can you see that? And, you know, just while I was praying this morning, the Lord was helping me to understand the reason why. He said, because you are in covenant with what? Abraham through Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Can you see that? We have inherited the promise through Christ Jesus, the promise that was given to Abraham we have inherited it through Christ. Hence the reason why as a son, you know, because of that promise is the reason why we are in tune with what? The calendar of the Jews, the Israelites. <laughs> Can you see that? So if you are a son, that is basically the dimension of what the Lord is speaking through. Hence why I said the new year is not January 1st, 2024. The new year is, you know, in the Gregorian calendar, uh, September, I believe 15 to 17, the Rosh Hashanah. Amen. So it's a place where the Lord in his infinite mercy, you know, is showing mercy to those who are going through the addictions of pornography. Can you see that? The addictions to pornography addictions you know there are some people even though they are married they still basically go through these addictions they can be there with their wives <laughs> and yet they're there either masturbating or doing all manner of things can you see that but the lord wants to what show you mercy because it's not by power nor by might because majority of the people you're trying to get away from it through your what through your own strength now let's read the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 1. 
right? Like I said, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is not here to condemn anybody who is already struggling with, you know, something they're trying to get away from. But it's by the mercy of God. The Bible says, he who is strong, you know, you have to look out for that who is weak, the one who is not as strong as you are, and bring them out of what it is that they're in. I believe it's in the book of James. I, I believe so. You know, you help the one who is what? <laughs> the one who is strong in faith. You help the one who is, you know, and bring them out of it. You know, and bring them gently to gent yes, to gently restore. That's what the Bible says. To gently restore. To gently restore your brother. So a lot of people are looking for restoration and they can't find anybody because you know why? They are not, you know, they are not, they are not, it's not comfortable sometimes. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 19 to 20, my brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, Consider this, whoever turns from a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of what? A multitude of sins. So the Father is asking each and every one of us to gently restore. You know, if you know you're able to, to gently restore them. Can you see? Because all they're looking for is restoration. They're already struggling. They don't know who to tell. They don't know who to speak concerning this. But yet the Lord is looking to you. Hence why he gave us the ministry of what? Reconciliation reconciliation. So, 1 Corinthians 6 says, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of our God. So the Lord is helping some of you to understand that he wants to give you the kingdom, but you cannot inherit the kingdom if you continue to walk in what? In this immorality. Can you see that? Some of you, you've been tasting and seeing, but you cannot enter into that inheritance. So if the Lord wants you to inherit the kingdom, hence the reason why he's showing you mercy so that you can eventually be free from this immorality in itself. Now, I want us to first understand this, right? Some people, they got into it not because of their own accord. Some of them is generational. Can you see that? Maybe somebody went and covenanted themselves with the god of, you know, the goddess or sea goddess or whatever goddess from the marine kingdom or sometimes witchcraft and sometimes, you know, all of these dimensions. And for that reason, can you see? Because you were not aware of what they did. Hence why I have always said that sometimes your healing is not in prayer. Your healing is not in worship. Your healing is not in praise. Your healing is in the courts of heaven. So it says, enter the gates, what? Enter the courts with, enter the gates <laughs> with thanksgiving and courts with praise, Psalm 100. And when you basically enter in, the Lord will begin to show you who started all of these dimensions. Can you see that? And for that reason, the Lord is helping you to understand. Yes, you did. You, you, you know, you're, you're basically what you did is wrong. Yeah, you've acknowledged it to the Lord that this is what you're doing and you've repented of it. But yet you can't seem to what? Get away from it. It's a cycle. The moment it feels like you've broken free, you go back into it. The moment you feel like, wow, I, I, I believe I've been free of this situation. Yet you fall, you find yourself falling back into the same pit. And the reason why that is, is because the root of it has not yet been dealt with. You know, the Bible, you know, we understand. The Bible says, I have given you a uh, power. It says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Like I always say, the demon is already bound. That is why people are bound to sexual immorality. Can you see that? So it is our place to what? To loose them. So you're not binding sexual immorality. You're loosing them from sexual immorality because that immorality has come to bind them in the first place. So that's why I said something, you know, that casting, uh, that binding, 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 that is not the, you know, I've done a video here before to help us to understand that we bind people back to God, not bind Satan. He's already bound. The book of Jude tells you that.
They've already been bound with chains. That is why they try to bring you into captivity. So we are here to loose the people and bind them back to Christ. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, to bind the brokenhearted. He loosed them. That's why he said to the woman who was bent over, be loosed. Can you see? And Christ bound her back to God. <laughs> Can you see that dimension? So a lot of people are struggling with this. Even those who are in homosexuality at the same time. I believe that a lot of them are trying to get away from this in itself. But yet, because of the condemnation of religion, you know, there is no one to help them. So that's why they continue in that in which they're doing. Because that brother or that sister has not found the right person to bring them out, to help them out of what it is that they're in. You know, they continue to go at it secretly. But the Lord wants to show you mercy. It says, be merciful that you also may obtain mercy. Be merciful that you also may what? May obtain mercy. And I want you to understand that you are not, you know, it's not just you. Everybody have, you know, we've all been there before. I have at the same time too, you know. And when I was going through mine, I didn't find there was everybody, every message you hear is condemnation, condemnation, condemnation. It took the grace of God himself to loose me from that dimension. It took the grace. It was him by himself. The desire of it just literally vanished. <laughs> Do you see that? Because when he helped me to understand the root of it, the desire basically vanished. Just like that. Not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. So can you see, even the book of First Thessalonians, you know, it says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. So they preach all of these things, abstain, abstain, confess, confess, abstain, abstain, flee from it, flee from it, flee from it. Yes, you, the Bible is absolutely right. You have to flee from it. You have to abstain from it. You have to what? You have to do what needs to be done in itself in order that you don't fall into that temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So it's a place where the Lord is wanting to show you what the root truly is. I've explained on this channel that most of the time, you know, it's either things that were done to you or things that have been in generational past. Can you see? It's the two dimensions because most of the time, you know, I want you to look at it this way. For example, you know, maybe it's a little boy or a little girl who was molested at a very young age. Now, she tries to speak that or he tries to speak that to the family. Nobody believes them. They're trying to look for a way out. But yet, every single time, people say, no, it can't be true. That can't be right. That can't be this. That can't be that. And then eventually, that seed that was sown when they were basically young begins to what? Bear fruit. Fruit of fornication. Fruit of adultery. Fruit of pornography. Can you see? Because it was a seed. The Bible says while men slept, the enemy came to sow a seed. So until you find out the root of that seed, do you see it? Hence, when the Lord says, whatever I did not plant, I will uproot. So when that seed is uprooted, the fruit of it, the tree of it, the branches, the leaves, everything begins to wither and it dies off. Can you see that? The desires, they basically vanish. You know, I want to do this. All of a sudden, you have no desire to go after it anymore. So you can see, that's why sometimes the Lord helps you by placing boundaries around you. Can you see that? So most of the time when the Lord is separating you from people, it's not because he's punishing you. It's not because he's saying to you that you're not friendly or that in itself. No, most of the time he's separating you so that he can bring healing to you. Because the people that you are around, they are not sometimes helping you. Can you see that in itself? But rather, they are leading you into temptation. Can you, do you understand that? That's why the Bible tells us. It says, for this you know, that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. 
So most of the time, right, that's why I've been sharing with us, according to James chapter 5, that you confess your faults to one another. So when the Lord heals you, can you see that? Or before, or when the healing is taking place, he asks you, I need you to go and confess it to that pastor. I need you to go and confess it to that apostle. I need you to go and confess it to this person or that person. And when you confess it to them, they will pray for you and then you will receive the wholeness of your healing. So you can see, God has already healed you because of what he did on the cross. Christ has already set you free. But the enemy doesn't want you to understand and receive the freedom that was given to you on the cross. No, he doesn't. Because he rather keeps you in the cycle. He wants to keep you in the bondage. He wants to keep you in a place where you're, you're with people that will continue to lead you down the wrong path. Can you see that in itself? So this is why the Lord is helping you to understand that your body, you see that body of yours? It is my temple. And every time you give my temple to all of these things, you are defiling the temple of God. Look at how pure and blameless he calls your temple. Look at how pure he calls your temple. But yet, when you surrender these things to what? To those, this act, you continue to surrender the temple of the Lord where it grieves him. You surrender it to fornication. You surrender it to adultery. You surrender it to what? To what? Sexual immorality. And then eventually you're grieving the spirit. And this in itself, this is what opens the avenue for all of these demons to come in. Can you see that dimension? That's why people always say, hey, you know, and when people always say, my weakness is this, be careful of what you call your weakness. Because that in itself was not your weakness right from the very beginning. It was not your weakness, no. Because somebody planted a seed. And when they planted the seed, you now agreed with the seed and you're now calling it your weakness. It was not it right from the very beginning. Because for a long time, I called it my own weakness. For a long time, I thought, yeah, this is my weakness. This is my weakness. Father, I surrendered this weakness. And the Lord was saying, no, it is not your weakness. Why? Because somebody did this to you. Somebody, I'm speaking to somebody out there. Somebody molested you. Somebody raped you. At a very young age, they planted all manner of seeds. You know, down the generation, somebody went and sowed a seed. To what? To the God of whatever it is at the altar that they basically place sacrifices. And eventually, can you see that? It begins to come in. So if you can now understand it, how can a virgin can basically be telling you, I am dealing with what? With, you know, spirits that are coming to try to sleep with me in dreams. They've never been with anybody, but yet they're saying, I'm having all these dreams where somebody is trying to sleep with me. Why is that in itself? Because that is what? It's a generational thing. <laughs> you see, they have not allowed anything. They are pure. They are blameless. But yet, it's because somebody down the line. That's why if you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, when he talks about, you know, the children eating, you know, the sour grapes, that means the children, they are paying for the sins of their fathers. But the Bible tells us in verse two, no longer shall this proverb be spoken. So I'm speaking to the two dimensions of people. So for the first dimension, I'm speaking to people who basically it's from generations. You know, it happened generationally. And secondly, I am speaking to people who what? They were abused, you know, or basically something happened and it created a trauma. And from the trauma, it opened the door. Can you see? <laughs> it opened the door. And from the door that was open, it opened all these avenues. And from that in itself, you began to walk in immorality. You began to walk in addiction to pornography you you know porn porn everything about porn whatever you know it's like you're with everybody and you just can't wait to get home and get it done and over with and after you finished doing it you now feel guilty i wish i never done that why did i just do that i didn't need to do that you know why 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 why, why did that happen in the first place that's because the root of it has not what been dealt with but the lord wants you to understand. So you can see, like I said, the two dimensions of people. First, generational. Secondly, right? Secondly, <laughs> the traumas from what was done to you either as a child. And for some people, 
you know, you basically willingly gave yourself over. You know, you're basically involved in all these immoralities, sexual immoralities, you know, adultery, fornication, and things like that. You know, for some people, it was done to them without their own, you know, they, you know, in the innocence of who they are. And for some people, they willingly gave themselves to it. Why? Because my friend is doing it. Because that person is doing it. My classmates are doing it. Peer pressure. <laughs> can you see that dimension peer pressure because my friend is doing it because my fam you know my, my brother did it my family did it and i believe i shared a video i mean i i done a recording about what about how god is reconciling our virginity yes so if you have i will attach it here and if you are able to go and watch it please do so where the lord is basically what reconciling our virginity back on Unto what? Unto us. So he wants to reconcile it. Yeah, you gave it away. That's very true. You gave it away. There is, you know, and that's that's something that, you know, and the Lord has forgiven you because you gave it away. And for that reason, he wants to reconcile it back to himself. Because when you gave it away, you did in ignorance. And now when you reconcile it back to him, then in itself, the door is closed. Can you see that? Amen. So I want to give, you know, just an example, you know, for those who, you know, like I've talked about generational, um, you know, helping us to understand that somebody went and done something down the line. And I want to help to understand for some people who through their childhood, this was planted as a seed. I remember when I was growing up, right, as a, you know, I believe I was very, very young uh, between, you know, when I was in the world, between the five, age of five to seven, uh, thereabout. You know, I used to have this uncle <laughs> who used to live with us at that moment. You know, my mom, a hardworking woman, she would basically go to go to work and come back late. So she left me in charge of my uncle, who was basically what? Who was always, he took me to school and, you know, most of the time he picked me up from school. So I recollect that at that very age, every morning before he say, took me to school, you know, in the morning, he would basically sit me down. <laughs> he would sit me down before school for about 20, 30 minutes. And he would sit me in front of the TV and he would be watching porn. And I was there. I was watching it with him at that age, watching you know, and I would sit there and I would watch and I would watch and I would watch, not understanding that it was a seed that it was sowing. Can you see that? It was a seed that it was sowing. I, I didn't know anything about it. You know, I'm like, what is happening here? What is going on here? You know, <laughs> so in my innocence, I was just sitting down watching all of these things. So fast forward many years later, became addicted to pornography. Can you see? And every single time, you know, I was in the world, I, you know, which I shared with each and every one of us, you know, I, the virginity was taken through witchcraft, you know, in that manner and, and peer pressure from friends at the same time too. And gradually, you know, became addicted to pornography. And from that moment, even when I became born again, it was still a struggle. I couldn't tell anyone. You know, just think about it. <laughs> You've just finished praying and people are like, yeah, yeah, the Lord moved. Glory to God. And you will go home and you will begin to masturbate. And you're like, what is this, Lord? And many a time I cried and I cried. And I'm like, Lord, get me out of this. But the next moment I find myself again doing it. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? But then you know, one day, I don't know how it happened, you know, just one day, you know, it was like I had collections, even to, it was so bad, you know, like you'll be watching to the point that you'll be watching people actually make out with animals. That was how bad it got, you know, and it was one day I just got up and I said, you know, I've had enough. So I took all the collections I had, I deleted everything and upon deleting it all completely, you know, for some reason after deletion, it was a place where the desires of it suddenly vanished. Suddenly, it vanished. You know, gradually, it was like wanting to do it. I had no desire for it whatsoever. It just completely disappeared. And I'm like, how did this happen? You know, because talking to people, you couldn't. But I was just crying out to the Lord. But upon getting rid of that collection, the father helped me to what? He basically removed it. 
And then as he began to heal me bit by bit, he now says, sit down. I want to show you because many a time people have blamed you for the way you've walked. Many have not even given you the opportunity to explain yourself. They continue to mock. They continue to ridicule to the point that people were using it, even witchcraft to bring you to commit sexual immoralities. Can you see that? Because yes, I opened the door for it because of the things I did. But then the Lord in his mercy found me and he said, now let's begin to work on it. And one of the things, the first thing he did was show me the root of it. But before then, he began to help me to create boundaries. He said, no, you know, with this person, don't meet them in, in their homes. Go and meet them outside. If you need to meet up with anybody, you know, if they are the opposite sex, meet them in a public area. Meet them here. Don't go into their homes. You know, he began to give me those boundaries. Don't go into their homes. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, and gradually, gradually, did I get it perfect? Perfect? No, I didn't. No, not at all. Not at first. But to God be the glory. Eventually, it made sense. After that in itself was put in place, what did he now do? He now showed me the roots. He said, you remember your uncle when you were young? I said, yes, Lord. He said, this is the reason. Because you know what he did? He basically used that because he knew who you were in the spirit. Because the devil likes to get them young. Yes. So you can see because of the light that you are is the reason why he tries to get you while you are still young. Can you see that? That's what happened with Jesus because Herod heard about Jesus. He tried to kill him while he was still young because Pharaoh heard about who? Moses. He tried to kill him while he was still young. So because they knew who you were, and because there was no right people around you at that moment in time, he decided to get you while you were young. So what did he do? Because my uncle, yeah, he was walking in witchcraft. He was purely witchcraft. He decided to now begin to use those things to accuse you in the spirit. I wasn't born again then. So you can see all these seeds were sown outside. So even though I came to Christ, it now gave the Lord the permission. So that's why I said you can say all things have passed away and all things have become new. But until that seed is reconciled, until it is taken and uprooted and then reconciled to Christ, then the breakthrough manifests. So all these years, while I was coming out of one pit and falling into another, this was the person who was using it to accuse in the realm of the spirit through a witch doctor, through whatever it is. He had control of that department. But to God be the glory. He eventually took the control of him and Jesus reconciled it back to himself. And this is what has happened to majority of you. Because either you were raped, there was nobody to tell. Either you were molested, there was nobody to tell. You told your parents, they didn't believe you. You told your, you know, your family, they told you, ha, hush, don't tell anybody about it. Keep it to yourself. It now became a stronghold. Can you see that? You could not share the testimony with you, with yourself. I believe I shared the testimony here concerning when I was married, right? You know, and you know, before the Lord released me from that, how the person I was with, you know, they were molested because they did not share it with anybody. It became a stronghold for their behavior when the Lord was trying to heal them. So you can see. A lot of people are struggling in their marriage because of that stronghold. A lot of people are struggling in their relationship because of that stronghold. A lot of people, you're there ministering to the body, but yet you're still with that stronghold, which manifested either through generation, trauma from immoralities, trauma from what? From fornication, traumas from all of this. And you brought that trauma, releasing demons, even peer pressure. For some of you, it was peer pressure. Your friend did it. You know, they told you how exciting it was. And you as well, you decided, yep, I'm going to get this done. You went and done it. And now look at how it has turned out. But the Lord is not condemning you today. No, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. He wants to bring you out of it. He wants to bring your struggle to an end. He wants to show you mercy because this is the hour that is showing mercy to a lot of people to bring them out 
of that bondage, to bring them into the liberty. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And do you know you are the spirit of the Lord? And this is the reason why he wants to destroy that yoke from you so that you can walk in liberty, that finally your marriage can once again be beautiful. Finally, your relationships can once again be beautiful. Finally, you can minister to the people without accusations. Because some of you, what you're dealing with is accusations, even though you have been freed from this, but because you have not reconciled the root of it back to Christ, hence the reason for the accusations in the realm of the spirit. And the accuser of the brethren who accuses them day and night has been what? Hurled down. And this is where the Lord is helping you to understand your freedom is here can you see your freedom is here so no matter how much you want to get away from that sister no matter how much you want to get away from that brother no matter how much you want to surrender surround yourself with godly people you keep falling into you know the bible declares in the book of second peter 2 22 it says that what it says like a dog returns to his own vomit you keep returning to that vomit you are set free for a minute but now you're back in it. You are set free for a minute. Now you're back in it. <laughs> you are set free for a, minute, for a minute. Now you're back in it. So until the root is dealt with, now you're going to experience that liberty. Can you see that dimension? <laughs> because when the Lord showed me this many years ago, about five years ago, this was my own liberty to help to understand it completely that this is the freedom. So about four years ago, helping me to understand, this is the reason why, you know, because that person created an altar for what he did. Now people are now tapping into that altar and then using it either through witchcraft to lure you, either through, you know, either through, you know, the demons that they release from that altar to lure you. So no matter how much you're trying to get away from it, they lure you back in it. The Bible says, and the angel, Satan, goes about like what? The angel of light. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? And the Lord, this is the promise of the Father. That what? It says that, the, it says in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, it says you will be free. It says it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. And you will no longer be yoked into slavery. So you can understand why the Bible talks about in Revelation chapter 2, Jezebel. When Jezebel uses what? She uses food. She uses her preaching. She uses the prophetic word to lure the prophets into what? Immorality. Can you see that in itself? So they know <laughs> because they've seen, yeah, this person, okay, this is what they do. This is, their, this is what they're going through. And then they begin to do all manner of things to lure you back into that immorality, to keep you enslaved in it. Some of you are slaves to that immorality. But we thank God that today you will no longer be yoked in that slavery. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So you can see, the Bible says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. Hence why, 2 Timothy 2.22 says, flee also from youthful lust. So before you can flee, the Lord can give you the grace to abstain from it. And when you abstain, he shows you the root, then you are finally free from it. It is for freedom. So the freedom is from the root of it. So what is the beginning of this immorality? Where did it begin from? That was my question when I began to walk in the very knowledge of freedom. I began to ask the Lord. You know, when you ask the right questions, the Bible tells us, it says, you have not because you ask not. And because you ask with the wrong motives, that's the reason why you're not getting results. Some of you are just praying, I want to be free from this. Yeah, the Lord can set you free, but Jesus said, I want to uproot it. Can you see that? So no matter how much, the Lord is saying, I know, I know you want to be free, but I want to show you the roots. So when you see the root of it, then you're finally free from it. When he showed me the roots that it was my uncle and how long he had been, just look at the many years been trapped in the same thing. Now be made known that he was the reason for it. Freedom. That's why he says you will know the truth. The moment I knew the truth, it broke off. 
the moment I knew he was the one, it stopped. So you can see. <laughs> so everything the, the enemy accuses of, they are the things that are yet to be reconciled into Christ. That's the reason for the accusation. And that's the reason why he's saying to you, I want you to be free. Can you see that? Because all of this began with a root. And he's saying to you, there is therefore now no condemnation. So you are, yes, in Christ. And there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Amen? Because he wants to give you the kingdom. He wants you to inherit the kingdom. He wants you to inherit the promises. So the reason why sometimes the promises are not released to you yet, it is because if he gives you the promise, which is of the kingdom, you can easily lose it to that sin. And he doesn't want you to lose the promise. So you can see, if somebody is still going through fornication, if they're going through adultery, if they're going through pornography, if they're going through all of these addictions, right? And the Lord is wanting to bless you. Before you know it, he gives you that blessing. For example, hey, I want to give you a house. All right, Lord, thank you so very much. You dance for it. You shout for it. The house finally arrives. And what do you do? If you're still struggling with pornography, the moment you basically enter into the house, what do you do? You start bringing <laughs> sisters, women all around, you know, to come and do all manner of things in that house. You lose <laughs> the blessing to what? To the sin. But the Lord is so faithful. He is so true. He's so pure that he doesn't want you to lose the blessing. That's why he said to you that the years, the locusts, the cankworms, and the palm worms have eaten, I will restore. The locusts came. The pornography came. The locusts came, the sexual immorality came, the locusts came, the perversion came. Can you see that? But he says that what I will restore. So for him to restore, he deals with the roots and now he begins to break it off you. And once he's broken it off you, he now restores whatever you have lost in that period in time. He restores it back to you. I know you're struggling with that pornography. I know you're trying to get away from it. I know that you've tried to speak to people concerning it, but the shame would not allow you to what to speak. But you will have to, because you know why? After we have prayed today, James 5, 16 says, you have to what? You have to go and confess your fault. So he will tell you, this is why I'm sharing with you that, you know, it's not everybody that you can share it with, you know, if the Lord has not given you the permission to do so. Can you see? Because for me, when I got the freedom, I couldn't share it with everybody. No, <laughs> not at all. Not yet at that moment in time. But it was eventually when all of it had been dealt with. And I said, now, now begin to tell this person. He showed me the person to tell. He showed me that person to tell. He showed me that person to tell. And now today, by the grace of God, I can share it with you. Can you see that? Because the Lord knows some of you are struggling to let this thing go. It's a spirit. It's an unclean spirit. That's why the Bible says, so for some of you, because the root has not dealt, been dealt with, that is why it says, when that spirit leaves, can you see? The house is clean. It has been taken care of. But what does he do? He goes out to look for seven more. And the condition of that person is worse than before. Why is it worse than before? Sometimes it's because the root of it has not been dealt with. So even though the house has been swept clean, but the, the roots might not have been dealt with, then it comes back with seven more. So if you're somebody who probably did it once a day or once a week, <laughs> before you know it, you're doing it every five minutes. Can you see that? And the Lord is wanting to liberate you. So can we share a prayer today? I want us to share a prayer today. Uh, to God be the glory. So let us share this prayer. Because I believe from here on out, the Lord will begin to show you the roots of it. He said, you know, if this, if, if you have faith as small as what? A mustard seed. You can tell this mulberry tree or sycamore tree to be uprooted from its roots. Have you tried to Google what a sycamore tree is? <laughs> Try to Google it. You will see that it has so many roots. <laughs> so the Lord begins to uproot them one after the other. So I want to basically, let us share this prayer together. You know, I'm going to pray for those who are is through generations. I'm going to pray for those traumas, you know, and forgiveness. It's important, you know, if somebody has done this to you, to forgive that person. 
Yes, you have to forgive them. You have to what? You have to forgive them. Because when I found out my, that it was that my uncle was behind it and everything, do you know what the Lord got me to do? You know, I didn't even know. This was before he even showed me that he was the one. The Lord made me to call him, to pray for him, and to bless him. You know, I prayed for him and I blessed him. <laughs> Can you see? The Bible says, bless those who persecute you and pray. He said, bless those who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you. So the Lord had me to pray for him and to bless him. And eventually after doing so, he said, don't pray for him anymore. Stay away from him. Then he showed me the truth. <laughs> I was like, Lord, why didn't you tell me this before? You know, because I was upset. <laughs> I was so upset. But the Lord calmed me down. He calmed me down and helped me to forgive him and then to let him go. You know, and then he says, you know, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Can you see that dimension? And he helped me to forgive myself too. Because I'm like, if that had not happened, I would not be in all that I went through. No, not at all. So I couldn't blame anybody. <laughs> you know, I couldn't blame, I just blame Satan. Because Satan is the one, is the enemy. Was it him? No, it's Satan. It's Satan, the thief, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Can you see? He uses people to manifest his works. So our breath, that's why it says, our, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It was not him. It was, it was Satan. He just basically, he got himself into that dimension. He surrendered to Satan and Satan used him very well. <laughs> Do you see that in itself? So to God be the glory. So let us pray this prayer together. Just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I forgive my generation for any covenants that they have made with altars releasing sexual demons. I repent of any part that I have played in agreeing with these demons. I forgive every person that has molested, that has sown the seed of immorality, either as a child or an adult in my life. I repent of the agreements with their seeds for the friends that pressured me into these acts, I forgive and I repent of every agreement with them. Every act of immorality, fornication, adultery, perversion, and pornography that I have been engaged in, I repent of it. I repent of the agreements and I repent of the contracts and I repent of the rewards. I cancel their manifestations. Where this has manifested through dreams, either as marriages and with sexual partners, I repent of the marriages, I renounce it, and I divorce the agreements and I divorce the spirits of spies that are attached to it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So can I pray for you? Father, by the authority of your word, I just come boldly to the throne of grace in order to obtain mercy. I release the mercy of God over each and every person, over their traumas, over their generations, over the peer pressures that came against them. I release the mercy to heal. I release the mercy even over they themselves and the addictions in which they have been engaged in. For the addictions, I break, break and break 
break the powers of those addictions in their lives. Whatever these addictions have led to, traumas, sexual traumas in their lives, I break the powers of those traumas. I release healing over the traumas of sexual addictions. For some of them, they have been addicted to either the pornography or addicted to sex. Whatever the addiction is, I break it off them completely and I set them free. He whom the Son set free is free indeed. No longer shall you be yoked to any slavery. Where these people have been made into sexual slaves, either through dreams or naturally in the physical, I break the power of that slavery. I release them from that slavery for the Bible declares it says a slave has no permanent place but a son belongs to it forever. They are the sons of God and I declare that where the spirit of the Lord is, there, are li there is liberty. I liberate them from those addictions. I liberate them from everything that came against them in times past and I release them into the liberty of Christ Jesus. I declare a new beginning over their lives. I bless you. I bless I bless your home. I bless your body. And I speak that right this minute, what the thief came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, I bless you with life. What the years of the locusts, the cankworms, and the palmworms have eaten concerning you, I restore it back unto you. That right this minute, the angel of restoration upon your life is restoring all that you have lost, whether finances, relationships, marriages, whatever you have lost through the act of immorality, I restore it unto you upon your repentance. Now, by the authority of the word. It says, and the word became flesh. I declare a manifestation of the glory of God over that temple, which is your body. I declare that in every place where that these things have lodged it themselves into, whether it be diseases, whether it be infirmities, I cast it out of your body and I reconcile your body back to the glory of Zion. That right this minute, it says in 3rd John and 2, I pray above all else that you prosper in health as your soul prospereth. I declare prosperity to your soul. I declare prosperity to your health. I declare that right this minute, you're going from glory to glory. No longer, no longer, no longer shall this addiction have a hold over you because it says, sit at my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool. That addiction is now your footstool. That immorality is now your footstool. It was never your weakness right from the very beginning. So every agreement that you made with yourself that it was your weakness, no, it isn't. I cancel that agreement. I cancel that affirmation. And I declare that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Because the strength of Jesus is upon you to resist the devil, to flee from fornication, to flee from immorality. And I declare that the Lord has placed around you boundaries. He says the boundary lines are falling for me in pleasant places. So I declare right this minute that the right and godly boundaries have been placed around you. That any person hey, that has decided to come and lead you into temptation, they will not by the authority of the living word that you will flee from them. It says, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me. You will be delivered. You will be delivered from their plans, from their snares, from their traps to lead you back into the dimension of what the Lord has delivered you from. You are free and he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. You know, I just kept discerning that word that says that what? You know, uh, you know, the boundary lines are falling for you in pleasant places. And I believe the Lord is helping you to understand. You know, just ask the Lord in your prayers to help you to create the right boundaries around you. Yes, the right boundaries. You know, like I said, it might not be what he told me to do that he would give to you. He might give you something entirely new. You know, because the Bible is unlimited. Sometimes, you know, the Father is unlimited. Sometimes you can start saying you need to do this you need to do this and by the time people are actually doing that they end up doing it in their own strength and then they're not able to match up to that in itself because that is not the formula that the lord has given them so it's a place i want you to go to the lord you know ask him father i need this in this moment and i need to create the right boundaries what am i supposed to do and you will see by the leading and the guidance of the spirit he will tell you you know whenever a sister or a brother who has the ba a bad intention concerning your life you know they want to lure you into that thing
person, the Lord will tell you, stay away from that person. 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 So you can see, this is what the Lord will begin to do for you because he will begin to tell you, I need you to stay away from that brother. Stay away from that sister. You know, if anybody invites you and they have the wrong motive, the Lord can say, yeah, you can meet them, but don't meet them privately. Go and meet them in a public place where everybody, you know, and that's, this is the reason for accountability. So you can see it, accountability, accountability. And I'm so grateful because with me, you know, I believe this is the reason why my, my father told me to come and stay with my mom. He said, for accountability's sake, because I have set you free. And there are people out there. That's why the Bible says, you know, he goes about, you know, a, 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 is, is a wolf that goes about in a sheep's clothing. Can you see that? Because they will tell you, oh, not to worry, nothing is going to happen. You can come. <laughs> and before you know it, you're there. They're telling you, please stay the night. They're telling you, please stay over. They're telling you all of these things and then eventually you fall back into the same thing. Please be sober and be vigilant. Yes, be sober and be vigilant. Be sober and be vigilant. The Lord is with you. He's guiding you. He's helping you because this is the day the Lord has made and no longer will you be yoked into the slavery of what the Lord has already delivered you from. Amen and amen. God bless you. Remember, there is therefore now no condemnation. And this is my counsel. You know, go and speak to somebody that the Lord has allowed the Lord to lead you to the person that he needs to speak, you, speak to you. You know, allow you to speak to. Can you see? Let him choose the person for you. So Lord, who can I confess this to? And he will tell you, go and confess this to that person. They will pray for you. And once they've prayed for you, you know, you receive the wholeness of your healing. It's important that you what? You confess it to somebody. It's important because if you continue to hold on to it, it can eventually become a stronghold and you go back into what it, it was before. So ask the Lord and it will lead you. It's, it's very, very important. Can you see that? That you confess it. It's very, it's very important. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless each and every one of you. I love you so very much, you know, in Jesus' name. And if you have any collections or porn, whatever it is, you know, delete them. Delete them from your hard drive. Delete them from your computer. Delete them from, air, you know, anything that basically, you know, basically those kind of things, they can grieve the spirit. Can you see that? Because he wants, he wants you to inherit the promise. It's about time. I know the struggle, <laughs> but the Lord has already set you free. And this is why he's putting measures in place so that you don't fall back into that sin because he loves you so very much. Yes, he does. Can you see that? Because it's the works of the flesh. The enemy tries to keep you in the flesh, but it's a place you have to understand that you're in the spirit. Can you see that dimension? You are the glory of the Lord. You are the blessedness of the Father. So don't let anyone condemn you for what God has freed you from. In Jesus' mighty name. So I just want to pray for you and just declare that any altar that has been servicing these immoralities concerning your life, I cry against those altars. I command them to be turned to ashes and I break the powers of that altar and I declare that the priests that have serviced this, this, this altars, I fire them in the spirit and I make them their own sacrifices on their own altars. In Jesus' mighty name. Those altars be turned to ashes right this minute. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You are the blessedness of the Father. And remember, Joshua chapter 6 declares that anybody who tries to build up what God has torn down in your life, they will pay for it with the life of their firstborn. And if they try to rebuild it again, they will pay for it at the cost of their lastborn. That's what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 6. I release this dimension over you. Be blessed. Stay blessed. Remain blessed in the presence of the Most High that you are. God bless you. Amen and amen.